let's get into the discussion here uh, to talk about uh, together for a better internet i want to introduce my panel starting from uh, the left side that is we have fidelis muya who is uh, uh, the director of technical services kenya bankers association thank you then we have uh, caroline okumu who is a child protection advisor at the plan international thank you thank you so much, much for making time for us mm -hmm. and of course our boss the host here the director general of the communications authority uh, 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 Mr. Wangosi Karibusana to Thank the show. You very much. And finally, we have Bright Maudor, who is the head of cybersecurity uh, services at IS Kenya. Thank yes. you for Thank making time for us. Thank you very much. And let's begin from the point of uh, understanding what is, th what is this um, safer internet day that uh, we have to spend some time on the fifth day of uh, February 2019 to talk about why is it important to have safer internet? Well, I think uh, safer internet was mooted in Ireland. Uh, by the government of Thailand and uh, I think a number of celebrations have been done and they are done every year. Um, I think uh, this could be the 29th uh, safe, um, safer internet day celebration mm -hmm. and the purpose for this is to make the internet safer uh, for use especially by our children mm -hmm. and also other people uh, with the different vulnerabilities. Right. So it's an important day for us, mm -hmm. and more especially uh, uh, for us as a regulatory authority mm -hmm. who are interested in having people connected and who, whose responsibility is to make sure that uh, uh, our connectivity to people are being used for uh, better use mm -hmm. in life uh, to celebrate this day and also create awareness for our children and parents mm -hmm. and other professionals to note that a safer internet is good for everybody. Okay. Yes. And Caroline, I was looking at some of the statistics and I'm saying that um, globally we have uh, 4.1 billion active internet users. So mm. the population of the world is about 7 billion. So 4.1 mm. is uh, way more than 50% of that. Mm. And also looking at that, 3.3 billion uh, users are on social media. Mm. Talking about safer internet, our focus is specifically for the younger uh, mm. citizens of the world, the, the children, call them, uh, below 18. Yes. Uh, when you look at this sort of access, what uh, threats does it pose, especially when you're looking at um, social media users at 3.3 mm. billion citizens of the world? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I can say that the internet is a very good platform. However, as you have said, uh, there are threats. The threats that we have uh, right now are inappropriate content. Sometimes we have uh, material that should not go to the young people getting out, mm -hmm. like pornographic uh, materials, videos, uh, pornographic uh, things that are not right for the age of the children that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, incidences of uh, predators who try to prey on the young people, right. lure them into sex, some even abduct them mm -hmm. because of uh, sharing their information online and they end up even uh, bullying them at some point. We also have cyber bullying mm -hmm. to these young people. So mm -hmm. those are some of the things that uh, we have uh, as challenges right now. Right. Yes. And so um, from the Bankers Association uh, point of view, um, yes, we have all these people getting to use uh, the internet, 4.1 billion. Uh, in Kenya, we're talking about 42.2 million uh, active subscription to the internet by I believe by September last year from your perspective uh, as bankers what then are the threats that we face regardless of the age group well other than the usual cyber security issues about the safety and security of your money online mm -hmm. uh, we have quite a number of other issues mm -hmm. um, if we look at predominantly the youth mm -hmm. we are looking at a lot of other unintended consequences of the internet. Mm. We are looking at issues of immoral content which uh, has been articulated uh, here. Mm -hmm. We are also looking at radicalization of the youth mm. through these um, uh, mobile uh, applications that are basically not regulated at all. People just right. spew content wherever mm -hmm. they do. Mm -hmm. And so we have quite a number of things that we need as a society to safeguard our youth right. through guidance uh -huh. to ensure mm -hmm. that the appropriate use of technology is applied mm -hmm. 
and we can be able to guide the youth in what is proper and fit to use. Mm. Okay. So there is quite a wide content discussion which you can discuss maybe the whole day, but if we focus on safer internet, we are looking at security online, mm -hmm. safety online for our children and our youth, mm -hmm. and then of course financial security to ensure that you can safely transact mm -hmm. on the internet without mm -hmm. worries. Okay. And Brett, I, I want to get to the point of um, the reason why we have this discussion, the reason why we have mm -hmm. a celebration of a safer internet day yes. is because there are these threats and these threats are, they don't just happen, they happen yeah. for a reason. What is this reason? Uh, the reason is because the internet is widely used. Everybody is trying to get on, 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 the, on the platform to you make life much easier. Mm -hmm. And for the fact that you're online, you, there's some level of exposure that you live to, to, the, to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there are people who are malicious, they have malicious intents of being able to take, uh, take advantage of certain vulnerabilities that we are not, not everybody's aware of. Mm -hmm. That is why the DJ is saying, talking about uh, awareness is something we're trying to create, is why the Safer Internet Day is there. Mm -hmm. The people need to be aware of some of the things that are there. Um, we're talking about from regulatory point of view to being able to action some of these things, mm -hmm. trying to see that people are actually, uh, do, do even know that there's, there's a cybercrime bill. The majority of people who have never read it, there are people who've never ever heard of it. Uh, majority of people, I believe, don't even know that this uh, data protection bill that is there. Mm -hmm. What does it entail? Mm -hmm. uh, what happens when I go to uh, the police station and say that I've been cyber bullied? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Mm -hmm. So all of these kind of things are, are, are what is bringing us to make sure that we understand what a safer internet is mm -hmm. and what are the rights that we have to privacy to data to protection right. and what are the mechanisms that we can use right yeah. and of course you can join the conversation by texting us on 22422 or tweeting us at citizen tv kenya at sam gituku uh, at willis raburu and the hashtag to use is daybreak as you get to discuss this about um, a safer internet day and the theme for this year is um, uh, the theme this year is together for a better internet all right <laughs> yes. together for a better internet so <laughs> let's understand from the point of view of the communications authority and we have uh, the challenges that they have enumerated talking about cyber bullying talking about inappropriate uh, content uh, financial risk that we that we face uh, from the point of view of the communication uh, the communications authority what is this that you have put in place to ensure that these threats are minimized or the effects are mitigated for especially for the young for the young of kenya uh, there are quite, quite a number of uh, activities that we are doing mm -hmm. and also tools that we have put in place uh, to ensure that we minimize uh, this kind of uh, uh, attacks that are coming as a result of the internet. Mm -hmm. In the first place, uh, I think for the children, we are running programs like child online protection. Mm -hmm. uh, these programs uh, um, are intended uh, to ensure that we create awareness both to children, teachers, parents, mm -hmm. on how best they can be able to secure their children from mm -hmm. uh, the activities, the wrong activities on the internet. Uh, in terms of tools, we have built a cyber security center where we are monitoring activities on the net 24 7. Mm. And just as my colleagues have said, you know, um, it is not just only about youth that we are protecting. Internet is being used for all the other socio economic activities. And of course, uh, criminals would want to uh, use the availability of the internet to be able to commit many, many various crimes, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, even uh, financial, includes, including even activities like uh, racism, yeah. including terrorism and, and so on and so forth. So these attacks, mm -hmm. uh, uh, normally we keep monitoring them. Mm -hmm. We also help the security agencies in trying to uh, bring down uh, those uh, those kind of uh, social ills that are on the internet right. together with other social platforms that you know uh, provide such avenues for people to be able to communicate okay. um, we also give alerts okay. uh, to critical infrastructure in the country mm -hmm. uh, especially those who are already connected to us through our our network mm -hmm. uh, we monitor them and any threats that uh, uh, we detect every morning we try to give these particular um, organizations alarm 
on what they need to do in order, for example, uh, to be able to protect themselves or if there are any threats. How exactly do you detect these threats? Um, as I told you, we have uh, a cyber security center. Uh -huh. We have tools and equipment. Uh -huh. uh, for those that we are monitoring for them, we are connected to them through our network. We call it a Hornet network uh -huh. uh, that, you know, help us to be able to detect to detect the vulnerability of their system to cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. So in that way, we try to minimize. We have uh, uh, very many agencies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, of course, we are still asking the Kenya Bangas Association to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to, <laughs> to join the network. Yes. But uh, um, uh, many other organizations like KRA, like, uh, like CBK, uh, like uh, uh, K, uh, KPLC uh -huh. and, and, and so on and so forth. We are around, around I have about 28 organizations that we are monitoring, mm -hmm. uh, public agencies that we are monitoring to give them mm -hmm. advance, you know, warnings in case of any threats so that yeah. they can be able to secure their systems. All right. Yes. So let's specifically talk about uh, the children and their vulnerability because you, you enumerated some of the challenges, some of the threats that they may face. But let's get practical to the point of uh, you have a child, they have access to the internet and um, these threats um, existent. So how do you go about it as a parent or as a guardian to shield them or even as a child? Can you shield mm -hmm. yourself? For, for parents, uh, tell them that it's good for them to also take time to be close to their children, to be able to even take time to listen to them, mm -hmm. befriend them, and when they are online, they can even uh, go online together mm -hmm. so that the parent also advises the child on which sites um, are harmful, what uh, being safe online is, mm -hmm. uh, what are the dangers that uh, happen if they expose a lot of their, like trading their photos with others, mm -hmm. what it means, the information that they share about the contacts mm -hmm. with strangers, chatting online, the dangers of that. And, uh, and then uh, also parents need to to take their children seriously in terms of um, even when the issues the children raise mm -hmm. and so we are saying that parents need to take their time really every day like 10 minutes just uh, have some time with your children talk to them they're on the phones most of the time you right. when you go to the houses or they're on TV or they're on the playstations so where is the parent and where is the child the communication that we have uh, been talking about in the past we, it's now not there, the face to face. Okay. So it's like we have left our children to the gadgets. Mm -hmm. uh, right now when you go to the waiting base, you'll find that children are on the phones while their parents are maybe doing other things mm -hmm. to just keep the children busy. Mm -hmm. But we are saying that children need to, to be even educated by their own parents mm -hmm. uh, about the harms, okay. about all those things that are happening. Encourage the children not to meet strangers. They have just chatted online with the gifts that may just be arriving in your mailbox. You need to question where are they coming from. Uh -huh. Maybe it's a, a stranger the child met online. Mm -hmm. You need to find out where are these unsolicited gifts coming from. Your child is receiving phone calls that are from strangers. Maybe they are already making contact beyond the online chat. Mm -hmm. So those are the things the parents also need to, to, to be aware of. But you know, th that's easy to say, but when it comes to the practicality mm -hmm. of it, because mm -hmm. um, you have a child, they have been exposed to the internet maybe since they were young. Mm -hmm. um, now they are let's say 16 17 uh, g going into 18 mm -hmm. they have their own independent independence yes. they have already um, established their identity so how do you control this the kind of people they chat with because uh, uh, even as mm -hmm. they share their photos it's sort of affirmation and uh, belonging to a community how mm. do you intervene into that uh, speaking from experience I have a 19 year old <laughs> who is actually doing computer science mm -hmm. now for him I see like he's already there so the discussion of being safe online mm -hmm. is not limited only to the younger ones but also those who are already using it because they, they, they are emerging issues coming up mm -hmm. like the issues of radicalization that you just talked about mm -hmm. the emerging things that are coming in mm -hmm. yes we tell them that inter the internet is good for learning mm -hmm. it's good for their research mm -hmm. but there are also risks mm -hmm. to it so they just need to look up for that and of course uh, telling them on where to report the cases if there is any threats online mm -hmm. uh, not to respond to those threatening messages you know we still have that conversation it's never too late even okay. if they're already on it okay yes and so how often do they report um, the young people and their parents and guardians how often do they report this do they even know that they you can actually uh, go ahead and uh, propagate the issue upwards <clears throat> actually one of the things that we probably we need to be aware is that uh, 
parents are more ignorant than children on the net mm-hmm. and, and and sometimes the activities that the children do on the net mm-hmm. uh, is is well beyond the knowledge of the parents right so what uh, um uh, one of the things that uh, we are trying attempting to do is to make sure that we create much awareness mm-hmm. about the dangers mm-hmm. also let the children know that as much as the, the net is good for them mm-hmm. to be able to uh, uh, acquire more knowledge and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of danger behind it as uh, Madame has just simply said. Mm-hmm. You know, you can never know whom the children are talking to. In some certain countries, for example, such a kind of content is filtered. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, I think our law is not strong enough to enable us to be able to put firewalls mm-hmm. uh, 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 at the entry of the the net into the country but uh, there are certain countries that have done so in order to be able to limit <coughs> the content that children can be exposed to mm-hmm. so i think uh, just as uh, my brother said about uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 about the laws that we have we have uh, established Mm -hmm. those laws have not been applied as yet Mm -hmm. but i think there could be good laws in order for us to be able to deter those who could be uh, carrying out such kind of malpractices the criminals Uh who are using the net for the bad intended reasons Mm -hmm. but uh, otherwise i think for me uh, the big issue that we need to do is to create really awareness Mm -hmm. Uh, for the children to know and for them to know that they are the dang- endangered species in terms of usage of the net is concerned. Mm-hmm. Right. We have had several cases where even some children have committed suicide mm-hmm. because uh, uh, they, they, they were cheated through the net mm-hmm. uh, uh, by such conversations like what we are talking about, being tempted. Mm-hmm. But at the end of it, you find that the expectations is not what they receive. And at the end of it, you know, uh, with all those emotions, children can end up, you know, uh, doing bad things like what I, what, what we witnessed sometimes was it last year or so, sure. where some some child in Mombasa committed suicide. Mm. So I I think for for CA, one of the things that we are trying to do is to ensure that as much as possible Mm -hmm. we create awareness to the parents in fact uh, everywhere we are going we have what we call uh, the child online protection manual Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, wherever we get an opportunity to talk to the masses Mm -hmm. we try to uh, ensure that we alert them on the various dangers Mm -hmm. of the of the net of course uh, the net is dangerous not just to the children alone even to other professionals and users right so uh, how we can make it safer so that it really becomes a tool that will make us even achieve like the big four for example Mm -hmm. because one of the things that will make us achieve the big four very quickly is the net Mm -hmm. but then how do we make sure that it is safe enough Mm -hmm. for us to be able to use it and with people I mean with our our population using it with all the confidence Mm -hmm. in order to be able to achieve Mm -hmm. what we want to achieve in terms of our economic planning okay yes all right again you can join the conversation by texting us on 22422 or tweeting us at Citizen TV Kenya at some Gituku at Willis Raburu, the hashtag to use is Daybreak. We'll be sampling some of your views, especially on the threats that uh, your children have been exposed to in as far as uh, accessing the internet is concerned. Like I said earlier on, we by September 2018, there were 42.2 million active subscription to the internet, majority of them uh, being via mobile telephone networks. We'll be talking about uh, that shortly. But I want to ask you, Bright, um, he is talking of we don't have a firewall that can filter content that is accessible especially to the younger generation so as a parent you're home you don't have a firewall from the regulators point of view Uh, you have children who are growing into independence um, as early as the adolescents so what are these things that you can do to ensure that the content they consume is already filtered or is safe because you may talk to them (laughs) but uh, their curiosity may not help well let's Let's face reality. Mm-hmm. There's the limitations to every device. There's limitations to every technology. There's limitations to every procedure that has to be there. Uh, the government can only do so much. Communications authority can only do so much to make mm-hmm. sure that the perimeter of what is coming to the country is actually filtered. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they're already doing that. But again, he said un- until we get a lot of players into the, the same bo- the same room, mm-hmm. we can't. There's only so much that can be done. Mm-hmm. Now, parents have the, the power to be able to... Now, with social media and the likes, they have the power to be able to filter 
details of what the parent, the the, the children are, are watching. Mm-hmm. They have the power to be able to um, actually have a, another account to say that, look, my child, my 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 child, my my son or my daughter is on Facebook. But you can also log into their Facebook to see what they're looking at. Uh-huh. You can also try to see what kind of communications they're having, who they're talking to, what are they exactly doing, what are they posting. Uh-huh. Because with that exposure, they actually leaving themselves to a lot of, uh, of, of these threats that are there. Mm. So um, having basic antivirus on your phone, on your mobile devices, there are, there's so many free ones that are there. Uh, being able to actually have a double login that if your child is trying to do something they're not supposed to do you can also log in and see um there are technologies that are out there for your home internet connections whereby you can filter out mm-hmm. what is being co- what's coming through mm-hmm. and some of these devices uh that you put there can actually filter out adult content can filter out pornographic uh, details or anything that is deemed to harm your children mm-hmm. so we just need to make sure that we let parents know what exactly they can use what are the ways they can do it and how are they going to be also feel responsible how mm-hmm. often even how often do they check mm-hmm. to check their children playstation might look very innocent to someone mm-hmm. but it's connected to the internet the kids actually chat with other people on the internet mm-hmm. through the playstations through the game that they actually use online uh so we need to just make sure that we actually become an, it becomes a habit okay that we often check not the thing that we 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 wait until the damage happens before we mm-hmm. take action so proactivity uh, to say i want to be a little specific like, yes. like let's say you have a search engine that you're afraid that the kids might um, access content that they should not so what exactly do you do with such a search engine well well for like for example if you put google chrome you can uh-huh. set you can put a sentence to say that no adult content can be searched on this uh-huh. youtube it will not work mm-hmm. so just generally you, if your child goes to search something they're not supposed to see they're only limited to an, an age group that it shows and, ha- and how do you make sure that they do not become so clever that they actually know the securities <laughs> that you have well they, they you have to keep on being vigilant because the kids are smarter these days uh-huh. i mean uh what like uh, you find kids as young as seven years old, eight years old, who know how to maneuver around these things. Uh-huh. Give a kid who is four year, four, a four-year-old mm-hmm. a tablet or a three-year-old a tablet. Mm-hmm. Trust me, after you unlock two or three times, they already know exactly what to do. Mm-hmm. You know, so we just have to make sure that the, the control. We can. There's only so much we can do. We can't watch them every single time. Mm-hmm. But if we do put those basic settings, it becomes a habit. Mm-hmm. So they also don't know. They also know that they're not supposed to actually do such such okay. things. You okay. know. And yeah. Fidelis, I don't want to limit you to financials, <laughs> uh, but I, I know, especially on social media, for instance, yeah. on uh, Facebook, you mm-hmm. have a limit of, um, you have to be at least 13 yes. uh, to, to get on board. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to financial services, right. are there limits? I know when you want to open a bank account, you're mm-hmm. limited to, you have to have an ID right. in the country. So, uh, But uh, the online platforms, is it a must? Um, actually, not so much. Even for children to have an account, um, the parent can open an account for the child on mm-hmm. behalf of the child. Mm-hmm. There are quite a number of banks that offer children's savings and children's products for mm-hmm. financial services. And we are trying to engage children mm-hmm. to get into financial services at the earliest stage. Mm-hmm. Because one of the biggest problems we find in Kenya is by the time somebody is 25, if they don't know how to manage their money, then we have, we have a problem. And a lot of these social ills actually arise because people don't know how to manage their money. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to start young, Mm -hmm. start teaching them the basics of financial services, enable them to see how money is used, how to save, how Mm -hmm. to develop themselves into financial uh, literacy, so to speak. Right. Um, But going wider, like you invited me to do, um, my friend has mentioned about all the available tools. Yes. But one of the biggest tools as a parent is to get your children's trust. The idea behind setting boundaries for the child, make sure the child knows I can do this up to this limit, beyond this limit, I'm not supposed to do it. And then you give the child the trust to make sure that they know you trust them. Mm -hmm. And even when you are checking, you are not checking to find a fault. You are checking in a way to give the child more confidence Mm -hmm. that yes, the internet is available for you to use, Mm -hmm. but there are certain things you should not be able to do. Okay. Um, He mentioned about age-appropriate content. Uh, What you normally do is, for example, in my house, 
I have children of various ages, so I give them a login access, mm -hmm. which I then limit. Mm -hmm. So I ensure everybody knows this is my password. I will use it for this site. When they log in, I teach them log in and then log out. Mm -hmm. The next one will log in and log out. Mm -hmm. So they already understand at that early age mm -hmm. that whenever I'm using my computer, I need okay. to log in. This is my password. I shouldn't share it and such things. Okay. With Facebook, what I've discovered is make your children mm -hmm. your friends in Facebook. Mm -hmm. One of the values of Facebook is that if your child posts something and your friends, mm -hmm. you'll get to see it. Yes. So in a way, you will be monitoring what the interaction is without them knowing that you're interacting with them because you will see what it is they are saying. But some of them may block you when they know your identity. Now then if you are blocked you know you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you have to ruin your child trust. Right. Uh, for the for your child to block you on the internet you uh. must have done something. <laughs> so again the parents must take some element of responsibility uh -huh. to ensure that one your child trusts you they share with you uh -huh. and then once they have that trust they will have no problem sharing their profiles okay if you guide your child properly discipline is not about physical discipline mm -hmm. it can be guidance you yes. can tell your child this is what we need to do and why we need to do it depending on the age mm -hmm. some of them you simply tell them you are not allowed to see this mm. others you tell them you're not allowed to see this because you are not at the right age mm -hmm. when you're at this age you can start seeing this okay. and as you loosen the boundaries they become more responsible as they grow okay and i think that that would work Right. So l l let's spend some time looking at um, the finances because you're saying that you're encouraging the young people and the children to get on board into the financial management uh, right. uh, affairs. Mm. Uh, so sort of uh, one of the things that um, these attackers will use to lure young people, mm. let me say young people, not just children, is money. True. So you're online and someone is offering you money. Right. Uh, so what exactly do you do? in uh, the value system to yes. ensure that uh, children are not lured by these very enticing resources that is called money okay there are two things you can do number one is your child should have a value system to understand nobody will give you money for free mm -hmm. so anybody who's giving you money wants something in return mm -hmm. so the benefit of teaching children how money is made how money is used is such that they understand where money comes from and what to do with money mm -hmm. the moment they do that then they understand the value of work and mm -hmm. working for their money mm -hmm. uh, it's very rare that somebody who understands how money is made that they'll be paid money enticed into money sure. uh, without understanding why the money is coming through mm -hmm. there are a lot of social pressures nowadays we have a very educated highly educated IT literacy youth mm -hmm. but they are not enough jobs right. so we have a lot of uh, pressure to actually make this money some of them don't have jobs mm -hmm. and they are easily enticed into it so again the value systems that we entice into a we build into our children mm -hmm. become very relevant at that point okay yeah all right so let's get to the conversation about uh, like i was referring to the statistics of uh, 2018 september 42.2 uh, million active internet subscriptions majority of them on mobile telephony uh, mobile um, t uh, telephone networks that was about 41.8 million so you're saying beyond mobile networks is about um, 0 0.4 million that's mm -hmm, 400,000 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so what challenges does it pose that you have um, people connected to the internet maybe via their phones or their laptops but based on the mobile telephone networks what threats or what challenges does it pose uh, in as far as regulating or monitoring the content that people are able to access um, in the in the first place I I want to say that um, accessibility to internet mm -hmm. in Kenya is over 90 percent through mobile phones mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it is not just Kenya alone I think uh, uh, worldwide mm -hmm. uh, most of the uh, ac accessibility to the internet is via the phones and that is why even mm -hmm. the technology the wireless technology has improved so much mm -hmm. uh, to the extent that it can also be able uh, to to relay very high data speeds, mm -hmm. which of course will enable people to download mm -hmm. uh, materials at uh, at very fast rates. Mm -hmm. Now, for us as a regulator, uh, I wouldn't want to say that it's really posing a serious problem for us uh -huh. in terms of regulation mm -hmm. and in terms of monitoring of content, because whether it is uh, through the the wired uh, connection or the wireless connection, right. I think this content emanates from somewhere. 
And uh, I, just as I have said uh, earlier, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the discipline on the way somebody is supposed to use these particular devices, mm -hmm. it is all about awareness and the dangers behind it. Okay. Or even more importantly, uh, as I had said, maybe using devices that can block certain content from coming into the country. Mm -hmm. I think some, I said earlier some other countries have done it. Yes. Um, unfortunately, I really, uh, while we are even talking about children, mm. even adults mm. like that inappropriate content so much. Mm -hmm. you, might, you might find that much of the time, much of the bundles, much of the money is spent mm -hmm. for the purposes of, of watching that inappropriate content. Mm -hmm. And this appropriate, uh, inappropriate content, because of the demand, also those who generate it, as we were saying, are looking for money. For them, it's a job. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but for us, I mean, those who are consuming it has a negative impact, mm -hmm. but particularly now when we narrow down to children. Mm -hmm. So we believe that uh, the technology per se mm -hmm. is really not... Uh, um, uh, 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 the kind that you would say is encouraging and it is making it so slippery for us mm -hmm. to be able to monitor this inappropriate content. Mm -hmm. It's the discipline of using that particular technology. Okay. And, 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 and I believe that uh, uh, for a long time, mm -hmm. because uh, looking at the demographic of, of Kenya, mm -hmm. for a long time we will still rely very heavily on mobile technology to be able to access mm -hmm. uh, more people mm -hmm. and therefore um, so what happens uh, maybe my, my my clarion call on this is to tell those who use the technology to be a little a little more disciplined uh, and more especially the adults and if the adults are, are disciplined I'm sure the children will also be disciplined okay but as long as the adults are also not disciplined mm. then you know it becomes very difficult for us to control the children okay. so, uh, so 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 far I would want to say that uh, the, the, the wireless technology itself uh, really is not a problem in so far as uh, uh, monitoring of content is concerned mm -hmm. yeah it is just the way we use it okay all right uh, still with you when uh, beyond the content inappropriate content there is that threat of cyberbullying um the relationships online and someone has gotten into a situation that is challenging and um you're threatened as a young person or as a child and, and the parent is aware so how do they uh, get justice well, I, I think uh, usually <clears throat> we, we ourselves have told the public um, we have hotlines mm -hmm. where, you know, if somebody is aggrieved uh, by any content appearing on, 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 uh, on the internet mm -hmm. can call us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, it can also be, as you say, mm -hmm. you can be bullied maybe through social media. Mm -hmm. In fact, it has been happening quite a lot, especially around the elections. Mm -hmm. uh, what, we, what we have been doing is once we are alerted, alerted mm -hmm. we bring the, those, those sites down. Mm -hmm. With the help of uh, the social media platform providers, mm -hmm. we have always been bringing them down. Mm -hmm. We also can help the law enforcement agencies mm -hmm. to be able to trace mm -hmm. the origin of who uh, probably may have placed that kind of content right. on the platform. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, once once uh, the, the public alert us on anything that they think, mm -hmm. uh, maybe somebody is being bullied, maybe somebody is, uh, even to, to some extent, there are even um, attacks like malwares, uh, attacks like botnets, mm -hmm attacks that are intended just to destroy the information that you have mm -hmm. we are, we are, once we are alerted and some t as i as i was i was telling you our cyber security center is monitored 24/7 mm. we try to ensure that we help the smooth flow mm. of information on the net okay. and therefore um, by, by, by 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 interacting with the public uh, we also help the public in very many ways to try and uh, uh, ensure that you see they are comfortable with what they receive on the net. Okay. We have had cases where even uh, some people have been, some people have posted mm -hmm. very inappropriate photos of other people just to damage them. And, 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 and uh, this has happened a number of times, but we have been able to help the public by pulling such a kind of material down. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 
All right, we'll get back to that shortly. But before we do so, um, so for a child, and um, they have been bullied, or they have been attacked <laughs> online, uh, how exactly would you advise that parents handle such situations, despite counselling their child and taking them to a, to a, to a counselling psychologist? How do you help them at least find justice, like what he's referring mm-hmm. to? Yeah, in the courts, we have the children's courts specific courts just to handle children matters so the legal system has to also take its course we have children magistrates Mm -hmm. so if there is sufficient evidence that uh, a child has been bullied online and there is uh, this there are prosecutors who will follow up through the case and of course as you said um, of course counseling has to be done because this child has to recover they have to be restored back to their to their selves Mm -hmm. of course it will take time to recover but at least you have to do some some form of counseling, psychosocial support mm-hmm. to bring the, the child back. Have you interacted so, with such kind of cases? Yes, I have. Um, one that I handled of actually two children. Uh, the girl was older, sending content to a boy who, who is younger. And uh, the, por- the parent of the boy came to report and said the, the girl is sending inappropriate nude photos to the oh, son. Herself. Yeah, to the son. Uh-huh. And uh, they were all in the same school. And so what she did is to go to the police and the police came and picked the girl from, from school. So uh, we had to bring in the children officers, of course the children officers who at least would sit down the, the parents, mm. first of all to ensure that the children matters are handled well. And of course uh, the, the, the police and of course see how to handle the case appropriately rather than having one blame the other. Mm. So there are those um, cases whereby if it's child to child, you handle it in a different way and of mm-hmm. course the adult we have the cybercrime unit the okay. dci has a specific unit where we handle the children cases also mm-hmm. they also help us to okay. follow up on such cases so so le- let's i uh, take some interest in uh, what you just said <laughs> <laughs> so these two children yes how old are they how old are 13 they? and 14 13 and 14 yes so what would motivate this girl to be sending such kind of uh, pictures to this young boy there must have been some form of exposure somewhere inappropriate content that was coming from somewhere where this girl has and because of the friendship they have maybe she felt he should she should also share with a friend of hers a boyfriend they're all in school so um for the for the boy the mother had some way of following up the content so you see the mother picked up but from the girl's side there were no measures so you find such kind of parents one side is very protective as he had said he has values Mm -hmm. there's the other side that don't have so you'll pick it from your child the other one doesn't have so the one who has the measures may help the other one so those are the challenges that we also face let me ask (laughs) where does it begin is it um, does online start off this kind of reaction or is it um does it start else start elsewhere and then you exp- uh, you express it online? The conversations can start elsewhere, like no, taking no, I'm, nude I'm, photos, so yes. for example, uh-huh. where young people just feel like they want to maybe show off, or the teenage, you know, the challenges of teenage. Some want to feel like they belong, so they take photos, post. You want others to see, comment if they like them. You feel nice, but if they don't like them again, you feel bullied. You see, so such discussions go off and online Mm -hmm. so from offline to online and then sharing widely Mm -hmm. as you said the children sometimes don't know the boundaries on what should be shared publicly and privately so those unless you set values for your family values for your children this awareness that we are talking about all over in Mm -hmm. schools Mm -hmm. in the family Mm -hmm. all of it has to be done otherwise we we all have a a big challenge okay and of course we'll be continuing with that conversation later on it's all time now it's um 23 minutes past seven o'clock we want to take a short break uh, but when we return we continue with the discussion on a safer internet day of course the theme once again is together for better internet you can text us your views on 2242 you can tweet us at citizen tv kenya at samgituku at willis raburu the hashtag to use is daybreak especially asking those questions those stubborn questions that you have on how to utilize the internet and how you can report uh, situations that you get uh, you get to encounter or even your child and you can also uh, cite some instances that you may have witnessed especially with your uh, young children or rather the young adults who may be <laughs> uh, still exposed to this kind of uh, um, a threat